Okay, welcome. So we're going to start with our seated meditation. If you like to use a cushion or a block, you can use that to get settled. And then taking whatever comfortable seat works for you. So either taking your Sukhasana easy cross-legged position or your Virasana hero's pose over your block or your support. The idea here is to create comfort pretty early in the morning. If you're watching the replay, I'll let you know when it's time to press play on the playlist. And so as we arrive in the, into this space for the yoga practice, as we arrive onto the yoga mat, we are also arriving into our bodies with a chance to connect to the breath. You don't have to close your eyes. You can actually use your vision to scan your surroundings. We use proprioception feeling in the body to figure out where our body is in space. We can also use our vision, our line of sight to help gather information for this present moment. What's happening now? Am I safe? How much space is around me? So taking in the simplicity of arriving. And as you're using your vision, your line of sight, you can just sit a little bit taller. And then at a point when it's comfortable for you, feel free to close the eyes. If closing the eyes isn't comfortable, you'll just soften your gaze. So you'll take one point focusing and then just unfocus, let things get a little blurry around the edges. And you can try that on rather than closing the eyes, working with what's available in your body to create comfort, security, ease. So as we move into this meditation, I always like to start with that seated meditation. Today, I'll give the invitation to put your hands on your belly, to lower abdomen, and inviting the breath down to those lower lobes of the lungs. And start to feel the softness of the front of your body. If touching the belly isn't comfortable for you, just go ahead and let your hands lay on your thighs and just visually visualizing as if you can see it in your mind's eye, your belly inflating as the breath rises up. And then emptying out, belly deflating. And if you're touching your belly, you can feel that movement under the hands. If the fingers are somewhat interlaced, maybe you feel them just slide next to each other. So taking these conscious breaths to center into the body. Also an uh, act of clearing. So letting go of anything that stuck on overnight anything from yesterday, earlier in the week, earlier in the month, the year. Expansion across the front body. And then can you allow for a slight lift at the back of your heart? So if I just had my hand right there at your back body, giving just a little lift to create more space between the vertebra and your spine. And letting go of any perfectionism with this practice of breathing. There's no wrong way to do it. Two more breaths, your pace, your rhythm.
As we move towards a period of silence, you can let your hands rest on the thighs again, palms face up, mudra of receptivity. Are you open to receive? Is there something that you're hoping to get out of this moment? Any expectations that you have of your body, this class, of me? And rather than pushing away any expectations, distractions, wandering thoughts, can you just create space to hold all of it right here, right now, as you settle towards your center, settling towards a space and place of peace, comfort, security. And we'll take about two minutes of silence a chance to do nothing. Anchoring back to this moment with your breath. If you'd like, you can take a little bit larger inhale, a little bit longer exhale, full body breath. We'll start to breathe in and out through the nose. If you have ujjayi breath in your practice, you can add that in. And we're going to take the hands heart center on Jali Mudra, palm to palm, fingertip to fingertip. Press your sternum right into the thumbs here so you feel a connection between your hands and your body. Maybe sitting even a little bit taller and feeling energy through the top of the head. And we'll call on a mantra, intention, motivation dedication, inspiration, something that feels good that you'll carry with you through this day and through your yoga practice, and then maybe even with you towards sleep this evening. If you don't have one, you can try on Love Guides Me. slowly releasing your hands to your lap, opening the eyes, and we're just gonna start with a couple easy shoulder circles. Inhaling as the shoulders come up towards the ears, round and down. Inhale up. And still down. 
One more. Inhale. Exhale. Continuing like that, and we're going to press play on the playlist. So if you have the playlist ready, we are going to press play in three, two, one, play. And we're coming back to our seated position. And we're just going to take an easy twist. So arms to a T. Exhale, twist towards your left. Can you let it be easy? You don't have to go to that full range. Inhale, arms to a T. Exhale, twist towards your right. Couple more, flow with your breath. Getting a little bit taller as you twist. Seeing if you can keep it pretty slow so that your movement matches your breath rather than your breath matching your movement. Silent agreement that we're here to move together. Sacred agreement that you get to listen to your body taking any modifications or variations that you need at any time. We're going to hold towards the left this time. Pick your belly up. Sit tall. And as you hold the twist, just take your gaze back around the other direction towards me. And then we'll use our line of sight like we did earlier and just track all the way around the room as you take your gaze around to the left, all the way back into that full expression of your twist. And then everything unwinds to the center. Take your time. Five, four, three, two. One, inhale, arms to a T. Exhale, twist other direction towards your right. Find that tall spine. And then take your gaze other direction over that left shoulder. And then track all the way across the room, not leaving out any piece. expression of the twist and then taking your time to unwind everything back to the center five four three two one three shoulder circles exhale waking up like quality allowing the breath to come towards those upper lobes yeah just getting into your body last one This time we're gonna take the shoulders up to the ears, inhale through the nose. Hold the breath, pause. Tight, tight, tight like a turtle. And then exhale through the mouth, release the shoulders. We'll do that two more times. Inhale straight up, tight, tight, tight. Exhale through the mouth. <sighs> One more just like that. Engage through those upper traps, tight, tight, tight. Hurdle it in. Pause at the top. Exhale, release it. Okay, we're gonna move our support out of the way. If you didn't already grab your yoga strap, go ahead and get your yoga strap so that it's handy. And then you'll place your feet out in front of you. And then we're gonna roll down like a half bridge preparation, rolling onto your spine. And it's okay if you can't see me the whole time, you can listen to my voice. So laying your body down on the earth. Palms are facing the ground. Feet are hip distance apart. And you can feel a connection here between your heels and your sit bones. And then inhale, arms reach up overhead. Exhale, hands at your sides. So we're just moving the arms right now. Inhale up. You can plant your feet on the ground like a half bridge preparation. Exhale. We'll use bottoms of the feet to connect with the back of the pelvis. Inhale. 
exhale. On the next one, can you add on a visualization of some resistance, like you're moving your arms through thick fog, just to help activate muscles around the shoulder. Exhale, hands towards the earth, slow motion. This time, as you move your arms up overhead, can you tilt the pelvis? So it's like a reclined cow pose, or it might feel like you're sticking your tail out, rocking forward on the pelvis. Exhale, rocking back, so you're tucking your tail between your legs. We're massaging the sacrum, hands at your sides. Inhale. Arch your back, your low back. Exhale, flowing with the arms, creating that movement, back body. And you get that massage on your sacrum. And then as you're moving your, your pelvis, you can also notice a rocking happening at the back of your head. Simple, easy movement waking up the body. The last one, inhale. Exhale, come towards neutral spine, hands at your sides, pause. And we're just gonna windshield wiper the legs. So you can take your feet as wide as the mat and then just let your knees fall over to the left. And then knees fall over to the right and see how little you can engage muscles in the legs. Engage this movement from your belly. And let gravity start to take over the legs. And I'm just kind of letting the legs flop around a little bit. Contracting your front body towards your back body. We'll come back knees towards the center, straight up. Place your feet back to hip distance. Inhale, arms come up overhead. And then we're going to draw the right knee in. Look it in. See if you can activate through the biceps, but relax your upper traps. And we're just going to take easy knee circle here. See if you can let your arms take over control of the legs. So you're really relaxing the belly, the hip flexor. The top of the femur is just scooping out space in the hip, keeping it slow, easy. And you can start to feel this connection between the bottom of your left foot and the back of your pelvis. So that standing leg helps to keep things level so that our hips aren't rolling around. Relax your neck, relax your throat. Other direction with that knee. And even though we're laying down, we're in this full body posture, length in the spine, length through the neck. And so getting through the upper core using the arms. You can really plug in the shoulder blades. Okay, draw that knee in towards the chest. And then let the knee come away from the chest so the arms will naturally straighten. And then exhale, bend, squeeze it in. Inhale, let the knee draw away from the chest. So it's a very small movement here, just pulling it in and then releasing the squeeze. The last one. Hold the squeeze this time. Draw your forehead towards your knee. Pause there, but now let the knee come away from the chest. Naturally, the arms straighten, and maybe you even use a little bit of that pressure of the knee into the hands to draw your head, neck, and shoulders up away from the mat. Exhale back towards the earth. Head, neck, and shoulders recline. Place your right foot to the earth. Arms float up overhead. Exhale, left knee in. Activate through the arms and the biceps, but relax your neck and your shoulders. Add your knee circles. Still breathing. How easy can you make this movement? Just 
strong arms, soft hips. Oftentimes we show up on the mat, what can my body do for me? Let's start to think about what can we do for our body to create space, to create soft, gentle movement, other direction with the knee, carving out space, really using the arms to take over the leg. Sometimes we go to that large range of motion. How small can you make the movement? Connect through that right foot. Two more. Come through the center, draw the knee in towards the chest, tight, tight, tight. Inhale, release the squeeze, press your knee into the hand so the arms straighten. Exhale. Hug it in. Inhale, release the squeeze. Two more. Slow with your breath. Okay, this time hold it in. Draw your forehead up. Engage through the core. And now let the knee draw away from your chest. And you're really pushing into the hands here to help create that lift through the head, neck, and shoulders. One more breath, pause. Release everything down towards the mat. We're going to draw the right knee in, so both knees in. And we'll take both knees same direction, knee circles, getting a massage at the back of the sacrum. Other direction. Hop and off the knees towards the chest. This time, cup the knees with your hands and we'll draw the knees away from each other and then together. Are you doing a large motion? Are you doing a small motion? What happens if you try the opposite? Find your sweet spot. And when you're ready, you can try the other direction. Last one. Let's plant the left foot to the earth, right foot towards the sky. We're not gonna use the strap. We're just gonna grab behind the thigh. It's okay if the knee is bent. And we're gonna take some ankle circles actively opening up energy channels at the bottom of the foot. Other direction. Both knees towards the chest. Plant the right foot on the earth, left foot towards the sky towards that hamstring stretch, whatever feels good in your body, adding on your ankle circles. Spread the toes. Other direction. Let your breath be easy. Soft belly. Okay, both knees towards the chest. Start to rock and roll. I know we didn't use the strap, but we'll use it again later. Starting to rock and roll to massage the spine, to move energy. Take your time, and when you are ready, you can fold one shin in front of the other to come up and over towards your tabletop position. hands and knees, so your shoulders are just right over your hands, hips right over the knees, and we're going to take hip circles, so getting into the hip again, 
can you keep the back of your head pressing towards the sky? So there's an activation through that upper core. Neck as an extension of your spine. Other direction with the hips. Start to turn on the hands so you're already in this downward dog preparation. Knuckles glued, fingers spread. What's happening with the upper arm? Okay, come through the center. We're gonna stick our right foot towards the back of the mat, toes touching, and just pulse through the heel. So we're opening up the Achilles, calf, continuing to have that plank-like quality in the torso. If your wrists are sensitive, you can always come up onto the knuckles. Sometimes that feels better for me, especially if I'm on a soft surface. Okay, replace right knee next to the left, left foot back of the mat, and then just pulse back. And even start to think of this as a modified plank. And back of the head pressing towards the ceiling or the sky. Okay, left knee next to the right, back to your center. This time we're gonna kick the right foot towards the sky and then straighten that leg and bend it. Straighten and bend, lift your belly, good. And the last one. Kick your foot towards the ceiling and we're gonna tap the right knee behind the left. So cross it behind. Inhale, kick that foot back up towards the sky. Two more, cross behind, tap. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, back towards the sky. This time, knee will come around towards the right shoulder or elbow. Back up, two more. Okay, this time we're gonna put those two together. So cross behind the left, tap, and then up and around. That foot back towards the sky, tap it behind. Knee comes all the way around. We're gonna do one more. Inhale, right foot to the sky. Right knee taps behind the left, all the way up and around. Kick that foot towards the sky. Extend it long and then back to the center, let's take a child's pose before we move to the other side. You can use tented fingertips. Draw your breath in. And then release it. One more breath. Inhale back towards tabletop. Okay, left foot towards the sky. Straighten that leg and then bend it. Just starting to activate at the back of the leg, the hamstring. Press the earth away. Okay, left foot towards the sky. Tap your left knee behind the right. Cross your legs like you're going towards eagle. And back up. Exhale, cross. Inhale up. Exhale. And back up. This time, take it all the way around to the right shoulder or right elbow. Or sorry, we're on the left side, left elbow. And back up. And all the way around. Inhale, let's do one more. Don't ever feel like you have to keep up with me. Just follow your, your rhythm. Let's add them together. Tap behind and then all the way around. Slow, intentional movement. Sometimes less is more. 
giving your body permission to come towards that rest and relaxation while we continue with our movement. Okay, it's the last one. Right foot towards the sky. Extend it long. Knee comes back towards the center, child's pose. This time, invitation to bend the elbows. Take that reverse prayer with the hands. Extend your arms long, plant your hands, and come into downward dog. Upside down V-shape, take your hips high. Feet are hip distance apart, and then you can just move it around, walk it out, but keep your hands firmly planted. Elbows are moving towards each other as if there's magnets on the eye of the elbow there. So rather than over rotating that upper arm, can you create stability by letting the arms move towards each other? Bend at your knees, walk your feet towards your hands, Uttanasana, forward fold, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, your knees can be bent here. Exhale, fold forward, two more just like that. Turn on your legs, lengthen your spine. Exhale, bend your knees generously until your torso touches your thighs and let your head hang down. So you're creating a shelf with the legs to support your torso so that you can really relax at the back of the neck here. Shake your head, yes. Shake your head, no. Taking whatever arm variation best serves you. If you wanna take opposite elbows, you can also interlace your hands and just rest your hands at the base of the skull, but we're not pulling, we're just resting the weight of the arms, those limbs, to help create some gentle traction. You can also just wrap your arms around the legs, whatever feels good, so that you can let your head get heavy. release your hands to the earth and we're slowly going to stand up roll your front body towards your back body knees can stay bent five four three two one arms float up overhead through the heart center exhale two more just like that inhale reach wide exhale Turn on your legs, inhale, reach. This time, exhale, dive it forward. Halfway lift, reset your spine. Plant your hands, step it back, downward dog. Okay, we're gonna step the right foot forward. You can use your hand to help it get there. We're coming to warrior two, wide stance. Add on your arms, add on your gaze. So sit into it, really strong legs here. Look at your back hand. So you're turning your gaze towards the back of the mat and then take your gaze just like we did earlier, all the way around the room, tracking back over that front arm. Flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. Inhale, warrior two. One more time, take your gaze to the back hand and then all the way back over those front fingertips. Flip the front palm. This time, we're not gonna reverse it. Just take that arm straight up next to the ear, bend the elbow, and then take that shoulder stretch. If you wanna take the bind, feel free to grab behind. Otherwise, just coaxing the upper arm right next to the ear. And if you wanna reverse it, you can add on. Inhale, warrior two. We're gonna to pivot towards high crescent. So take your hands to the mat, 
pop the back heel up. You might need to walk the right foot over slightly. Come towards an easy twist, the right hand towards the sky. Back leg super straight. Hands to the earth, drop the back knee down, low lunge, inhale, arms reach up towards the sky. And this time we're gonna interlace the hands and just press the front thigh away and then engage that left glute. So we're pressing our torso away from the front thigh. These are your thighs towards each other. So we're not dropping too far down towards the mat, staying pretty high here to get a deeper stretch for that left hip flexor so as. Okay, this time, now you can let your hips fall towards the earth. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands inside the leg. Walk that right foot over towards your lizard. Your version, you can keep the back knee up or down. So if you want a little bit more work, you can lift it up. And then just hanging out here, you can take your right elbow inside the right knee. If you like to come down onto the forearms, go ahead. Your version. Take your breath with you. If you want to add on that quad stretch, go ahead and take your right hand to grab the left foot. Okay, slowly coming out of it, we're gonna come back up onto the hands, walk the right foot next to the right hand. So we're bringing that foot parallel and we're making contact with the right knee and the right upper arm. So everything's touching right here. Squeeze it in, exhale, release the squeeze. Inhale, squeeze your knee towards the upper arm. So you're engaging through that inner thigh. Exhale, release the squeeze. Inhale, squeeze it in, pause. And then add on some small hip circles there. Other direction. Knee stays tight, glued to the upper arm. Okay, let your hips fall towards the center. Tuck the back toes, and we're gonna take a three-legged dog. Just sweep the right leg up and back. You can open it up, get that hip flexor stretch. Scorpion variation. And let's take a couple knee circles right here. Other direction. Straighten out that top leg, downward dog. Pause here, or you can take a vinyasa. Okay, left foot steps, wide stance, warrior two. Add on your arms, add on your gaze. Trust the strength of your legs. Take your gaze towards that back hand, back of the mat. Crack your gaze, take your time. Flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. Inhale, warrior two. Take your gaze, back hand. Cracking all the way back over, you got it. This time, flip the front palm, reach that hand towards the sky so it's just right next to the left ear, bend the elbow, and then reach up and over for your shoulder stretch. If you wanna grab for the bind, you can do that. And if you wanna add on a reverse, you can reverse it, a little bit of a side bend.
And then inhale, warrior two. This time we're gonna spin the arms all the way to the earth, pop the back heel up, come towards twisted high crescent. So left hand towards the sky, easy twist. Yep, you got it. Back leg super straight. Hands to the earth, drop the back knee, low lunge. Inhale, arms reach up. So we already have our hips over that back knee. Interlace the hands, press into the thigh. So creating a little bit of a contraction along the front body here. So lift up on that right upper quad. You can engage through that right glute. Good. This time, let your hips fall towards the earth. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands inside the leg, moving towards lizard. And then adding on your props, your version, whatever feels good in your body. I like to use the elbow inside the knee to create a little bit more external rotation. Whatever you're doing, can you take your breath with you? Can you let it be easy? What happens if you back off slightly and give the body a chance to melt a little bit more right where you are and then see how the body takes you deeper? If you want that quad stretch, go ahead and add on. Continuing to have length in the spine. We'll release the foot. We're going to start to come out of it. So hands back to that downward dog shape. And then walk your left foot parallel right next to the left hand. Squeeze the knee in. Exhale, release that squeeze. Inhale, squeeze the knee in and making contact. Exhale, release. Inhale, squeeze, pause. Add on your hip circles. Keeping that squeeze other direction. Okay, let your hips drop towards the earth. Tuck the back toes. And we're taking our three-legged dog. Externally rotate, stack your hips. Then that top knee. Can you let the elbows squeeze towards each other again? And take your knee circles. Other direction. Straighten out that top leg, come to downward dog. If you want a vinyasa, go ahead. Maybe your vinyasa is just coming to child's pose and then back to downward dog. Moving with your breath. Okay, we're gonna step the um, right foot through, sit on your seat and then swing the legs around. We're coming back to that reclined position, lowering your, lowering your body all the way down. This time we'll grab the strap. We'll start with the right foot in the strap. So place the ball of your foot, that bony portion into the strap as if you were going to press into a gas pedal. We're just taking an easy hamstring stretch here. And it is almost 7.30. If anybody needs to leave, um, we understand. 
And so the idea of using the strap here is that you're giving your body space. So rather than saying, how far can I pull my leg? See if you can back off slightly, just coming to a place where you can easily straighten the leg and then walk your hands towards the foot so that the arms are straight. And now just relax your shoulders towards the earth, creating this reverse hammock. So we're just kind of finding this place where we can let go and then relax. Just hanging out, creating length in the low back. And now let's switch to the other side. So left foot can come up to meet the right. And then a right foot plants on the earth. Arms are straight, so if you need to adjust the hands. And rather than pulling, pulling, we're just we're, we're just hanging out. This reverse hammock, that's what I like to call it, where the shoulders can connect with the back body. Belly's soft. And there's plenty of space for the hamstrings to relax rather than tugging, tugging on the leg. We're just creating a shape where we can relax into the, into the shape of the pose. Okay, switching one more time, back to the right, plant the left. Same idea of the left foot is now our standing leg. And now you can come a little bit deeper into the stretch. We're gonna externally rotate that left, sorry, the right leg, the leg that's high, you can turn it out. And we're gonna bend the knee towards the armpit. It's like a half happy baby or a lunge on the ceiling. Inhale back up. Exhale, knee comes in. Keep your foot high towards the sky. Inhale up. So we're using the biceps. Relax your neck. Inhale up. Exhale, bend. Pause. Take both straps into the left hand. Couple options here. So first option is to take your right arm around the back of the thigh, like you're just hugging that half happy baby. Pausing there, or if it's available, you'll take your right hand outside the right foot. The left hand will come across release the strap and come across the body and hug the thigh towards the torso. So our leg is kind of more like a lizard out to the side, but there's still a connection there between your thigh and your torso, creating, a, creating some contraction at the right lung. If you want, you can extend that left leg long along the earth. Plug your shoulders towards the back body. Next inhale, take your hands back to the strap, right foot towards the sky. We're gonna take our arms really wide into a V shape. And we're just creating a lever here so the foot comes away from the torso and the hands come together, but your arms stay straight. And then inhale, arms come wide, but comes up overhead. Arms stay straight the whole time. And we're just creating some movement here, letting that leg lift and lower. Foot back towards the sky. Let's switch to the other side. Left foot into the strap. Right foot plants and walk your hands towards that foot. Come to your hamstring stretch. Both straps into your right hand, externally rotate. And then bend that knee towards the armpit. Take your version. What's happening with your low back? What's happening with the right foot on the earth? Can you create length? And then your version. So either the left arm around the thigh, hugging in that half happy baby, or you can grab outside that left foot and then let your arm release this left, sorry, release the strap with your right hand. Take that arm across the body and just hug the thigh. 
Let your shoulders come away from your ears. You can extend your standing foot, your right leg long. If that's available and you like it. If this was the last yoga pose you were going to do today, what quality would you bring to your breath right now? Is there any space to back off and let the body soften? Finish that breath and then on your inhale, come back to the hamstring stretch, both hands on the straps. Widen your grasp, that big V shape with the arms and then let your leg lower down away from the torso, hands come together. Arms stay straight as you open up your wingspan, let that foot float up overhead and just move with the breath a couple times. Last one. Let's take both feet into the straps. And this is like a variation of snail pose. So think about if you were going to start to initiate towards plow, feet coming up overhead, and just let your low back come away from the earth. And start to walk your hands closer to the feet and maybe even curl up. Are you breathing? Okay, knees towards the chest, release the strap. Feet as wide as the mat. We're coming back to that windshield wiper we did at the beginning of class. And if you wanna add on, you can take the pretzel. And it's about 7.34, so we just have a couple more minutes to get even on both sides. Hmm, moving to the other side. If there's anything else that's calling in your body, please feel free. Go ahead and take whatever shapes are calling. Let's come back towards the center and we're gonna just take a half bridge. So plant your feet and if half bridge is not comfortable, just take a couple more of those reclined cat cow rounding and arching, rocking forward and back on the pelvis. Engage the back arms, palms towards the earth to help lift your heart. Exhale, rolling down through the spine, upper, mid back, low back. And the last one, inhale, half bridge, Satubanda. When you're up there, can you feel a connection between the heel and your sit bone? Pretend you have a block, you're squeezing that block, lifting a little higher. Space at the front of your throat. And then lower your body all the way down. Five, four, three, two, one. We'll bring your knees in towards the chest. Take a happy baby. Starting to set up for our Shavasana. And if you need to leave early, just go ahead and connect with your intention. 
before you close your yoga practice. If you like to wrap the arms around the backs of the thighs, just keep the feet high towards the sky. If you want to grab the feet, take your arms inside the legs, palms are facing each other, and then your hands just slip over the arch of the foot, grabbing outside the foot. Arms stay inside the legs. You can rock side to side, straighten one leg and then the other. Can you plug your shoulders towards the back body? When we do that, it helps to relax and release those upper traps. Helps to create space for our neck. And then as you're ready, we'll start to lay our body long, Shavasana, resting pose, final posture. And you can use your blocks or a support or bolster if you have it. When I use the blocks under my legs, I like to take a little bit of an upside down V shape. And then external rotation with the arms. So palms face up, tuck your elbows a little bit closer to the body than the hands. You can even tuck one shoulder and then the other to help anchor the shoulders to the earth. Knees fall away from your center and let your belly soften. Release any control of the breath. All your work is done for now. And this is a chance just to rest in. It's about 7.40 now if you need to leave early. And for those watching the replay and staying a bit longer, we just have a chance to settle in here. Your body, your breath. Mm. Starting to gather up energy at the palms of your hands and bottoms of your feet. Draw that energy, that sense of warmth, maybe a color up the limbs towards the center of your body. Gathering up at the center of your body and then letting that energy pour over your entire body. every part of yourself reaching two inches beyond your skin, surrounding yourself in peacefulness, comfort, security, protection, fully contained within your energetic bubble,
starting to bring movement into the body, starting at the outside edges, working towards your center, and maybe taking a stretch of the body, arms overhead, whatever feels good. You can keep your eyes closed as you move your body back towards the upright seated posture. We'll let your head hang down. Give the body a chance to come back to equilibrium and circulation, oxygenation. And then slowly bringing the chin level, eyes can stay closed. And then just feeling this upright regal posture, feeling all that length in the spine, maybe noticing any shift in the quality of your presence and the sensations in your body compared to the beginning of class. Maybe it feels like there's even a little bit more space between yourself and any perfectionism or expectations of the day ahead. Coming back to your center, the wisdom of your breath, meeting each moment as it comes. One more full body breath. That conscious connection. And then we'll bring our hands heart center, Anjali Mudra. Calling back to your intention. Palm to palm, fingertip to fingertip, joining the left and right sides of the body as we join the left and right sides of our brain. A little bit more lift through the elbows to create this shelf across the front of the chest. Love guides me. And then we'll breathe together one time to seal the practice. Exhale to prepare. And breathing in. And breathing out. Thank you.